Welcome to the Behind the Host podcast, and I'm joined today with uh, Sean McGregor. Sean is from uh, Stay, Work and Play, or SWAP for short, which you can see behind him if you're seeing it on the video. He's a five-star Airbnb host. He's stayed in over 35 countries himself, hosted over 4,000 guests, and is an absolute legend, both just in general, but also in the Legends X uh, sort of training from Eric Moa and Jasper Rivers. He's a hospitable host, which we're going to be talking about, a project which we're involved in together. And uh, he's based in Austin, Texas. So thank you for joining us, Sean, and welcome along. Thanks so much for having me, Liam. Excited to talk about this amazing project. And again, so grateful to be a part of it. Cool, cool. Um, so tell me, uh, you know, tell me a bit about your business, Sean, and uh, how you got started hosting. Okay, so definitely a windy road. Um, Lindsay gets a bunch of credit for how this all began. Um, whenever we first started dating, one of the first times we went back to her apartment, she's like, oh, um, we got to be quiet because I have guests. I'm like, oh, cool, you have friends in town? I'm like, no, 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 actually I have Airbnb guests here. And so I realized that she was actually renting out her second bedroom of her Austin, Texas apartment. And because she was renting that out, it would pay for her entire unit. But then the big hack that she did was she would, whenever she would travel, she would run out her whole place and not only would it pay for her entire apartment, it would pay for her travel as well, which I thought was like the most amazing hack. But things got ratcheted up even further the next couple of dates where she was like, hey, uh, I just took over this new lease at a downtown warehouse in Austin. Uh, can you help me unpack some boxes? And when I walked in, there were Ikea boxes everywhere. And it was this like 1200 square foot um, downtown warehouse, Ikea stuff everywhere, these wood partitions. And she's immediately like, uh, dude, you hate it? Well, I, I'm like, dude, I just don't know what I'm looking at. And so what happened was she'd read the, the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. Yeah, and she nice. literally like worked, she'd worked remotely for 15 months, done an around the world ticket, you know, went to like 30 countries by herself, traveling, working the whole time. And her basic takeaway was anytime she'd stay in a hotel, she would, you know, sit there, eat takeout, watch a movie, you know, kind of have a lame experience of that country. But if she stayed in a shared accommodation, then she'd actually meet some new friends, um, go out on the town, you know, have people to, you know, uh, go explore the city with, plus you make those actual connections. So what I was looking at that first, like on one of those dates was she was building her own kind of co-living, co-working hostel, if you will, um, in this place that's normally made for two people. She put it, set it up to where seven people could sleep there. Plus there were 15 co-working desks in the front. So I've already been an entrepreneur. I had my own business at that point, but I was immediately just like drawn to that idea, like really amazed by it. Throughout the coming months, I would meet all the guests and help out how I could. And yeah, it just became what we called a friend factory where we'd introduce these solo travelers or digital nomads. They'd come to Austin by themselves. Four days later, they'd have all this huge group of friends and all these amazing stories and all these cool things they did. And then a month later, I'd see them in Peru visiting somewhere, you know, like all together. So it was an incredible experience. We grew that to three different locations. Mm -hmm. And eventually I was the one handling messaging for all 35 guests we had like at a single time. Um, had to build a lot of systems, had to get very comfortable with it. But where we ratcheted it up is we would travel. And while we were away, you know, we'd have to solve problems without actually being there. And so I got really good at delegating things. Um, you know, finding people remotely online to come in and help in situations. We're thousands of miles away at that point. Got taken even another step when our son was born four and a half years ago, where even if we were in town, I would then treat everything like I was in Europe or off somewhere else. Nice. That way, because like I wanted to spend time with my family and I've already done it in these other circumstances. So now I'm going to just, even though I'm in Austin and I'm by my son and something's going down at this other property, I'm just going to pass off that task to someone else, delegate it, focus on more important things, both family and then also like working on the business. Mm. Obviously, that business was great. I loved it. But sharing, a, you know, sharing rooms during COVID, kind of a non-starter. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah. So we had three locations. We were down to one location and it was our personal home, but it was this expensive you know, it's an expensive place where we lived. We also shared the other half. And normally that would pay for our entire place. Again, not an option. And then Lindsay's other business is a dance camp business where she has eight different locations around the U.S. It's her 20th year doing it. Um, and that's an incredible business, but it's also bringing 
solo you know girls from around the country to sleep in a room together so that's not obviously going to operate in 2020 either so my kind of pivot was um i'd previously helped out a few family members rent out their properties you know like we're we're based in texas i was helping out in florida and even though i had not you know anywhere around that because i've already been comfortable hosting remotely i was able to deliver five star results have a good time so my pivot during covid was well, I've already done this a couple of times. I've already done it for our properties a bunch. We have a profile on Airbnb that has over 2000 reviews. So I just started looking on different Facebook groups and finding people that were looking for hosts. And because no one could leave at that time, their homes, I had that kind of unique skill set where I'm like, well, look, I, I know how to run this business remotely. You know, we have, you know, delivered all these great reviews before. Um, I know how I have all these systems and how to operate. I've run, you know, 35 different listings by myself at one time, messaging all the guests. I can definitely help out, help out with your home. And it's just grown from that to 18 different homes around the U S um, I'm really been focused on like building my systems, getting everything automated as much as possible. And now I'm finally like going to start telling other friends and family members that I'm doing this and start to like start to scale now. But yeah, it's been a wild, wild journey. Um, yes. A lot of fun. I've gotten to a point, gotten to a point now where I'm so confident that I can deliver a great experience that if I, if a guest leaves anything other than a five-star review, I won't take a commission from a guest, from an owner. So, Dude, you know, that that's, is amazing. That's kind of the bar I've set. I've, I'm so glad you said that. I mean, there's a lot to unpack there, but I'm so glad you said that because that was one of the things, obviously, from us being in Legends X, we went through Legends X trend again. And if people don't know uh, Jasper Ribbons and uh, uh, Eric Moa, please check them out with Legends X. It's well worth doing so. But the oath... Absolutely from that which is you know if you don't get the five star then you won't take the money from it is is incredible because that gives owners such confidence that you're going to deliver on your promise that you know they're, they're going to go for it aren't they? they they're going to want you managing it and not only that you're incentivized to make sure those guests have a great time so that makes complete sense so obviously you met your partner uh you discovered you know sort of the amazing uh, benefits of airbnb and you've managed to travel while still hosting which is a big thing for a lot of people especially those who are listening not many people will be able to do that and uh is there any tips or hints how did you how did you manage to do that while on the road did you have to have certain tech in place and that side of things well so a lot of the homes that i host i've never actually been to so mm -hmm. one key thing that i always use is whenever i like i, I pay for whatever property to get professional photos, just so the owner doesn't fight me on that cost. And I wanna make sure, you know, it's a high performing listing. Mm -hmm. But what I also do whenever that photographer comes, I make them do a 3D scan. Nice. And so even if I haven't been to that property, I have a 3D scan that I can walk through that home anytime I need to. And then as I continue to add employees, they can also visit any of those homes at any point. And, you know, a guest has a question about the upstairs bedroom, instead of relying on a one-time visit or a couple times you've been there, you can go and walk through that property at any point. Amazing. So that, that's obviously been huge. Um, you know, I use hospitable actually mm -hmm. uh, for like, you know, smart messaging. That's been really, really important to the business just as far as, you know, delivering all the pre-stay communication. And then to help get the, like the, the five-star review, I text message all my guests on the day of their arrival. That way they actually have that, you know, personal connection, you know, if they're not familiar with the platform, they still know how to use their phone and the text back and forth. And that's just a way to like put a personal stamp on it, communicate next day after their uh, arrival, I always make sure to check in, see if there's anything going on. And, you know, that's kind of the discovery process to see if anything's going wrong. That way I can hurry up, fix it, do whatever I can to make things right. Because in my view, as a traveler, like, this could be their only time where you're actually traveling with that group of friends or that group of family. So I want to make sure it's right. Cause you know, whoever's booking has a lot of pressure on them to get it right from the other eight family members, let's say. So I want to always make sure I deliver that five-star experience and check in. And if anything's wrong, you know, do all I can to make that right immediately. That definitely shows. It definitely shows. And I mean, just going back a little bit as well on the discovering your avatar when you had guests sort of digital nomads, I think you said, come and stay in all the different places. I mean, that's that's quite a cool niche as well, because as soon as you know, you know, the part of the reason those people come there is to enjoy life like a local, basically, and get to know the people who are actually, you know, sort of residing there and then make friends. And mm -hmm. of course, if all of these people are similar 
well traveled they can share you know where to go next places they've been lots of stories and that that just sounds amazing how did did you kind of stumble into that being your avatar or or is it more of a case of of you actively are, are going after that kind of avatar so whenever we were doing the co-living version like the co-living co-working part like that was absolutely we're going for the solo traveler and we're going for the digital nomad and again Lindsay gets a lot of credit for that because she was that person and so she was scratching her own itch of like, you know, when I was by myself in this new place, if I was in a shared living, uh, you know, situation, I would be forced to meet people and be forced to like, you know, have conversations and learn about them. And then, you know, they know about a certain event going on or whatever. And then just the, you know, the adventure unfolds um, with our current properties like with all the co-hosting right now. You're dealing more with families, but I definitely love the digital nomad side of things. And obviously I think COVID is going to like ratchet that forward quite a bit because, you know, everyone's had two years of practice almost of working from home, working remote. And so I want to like help show people the same way that she did the, you know, rent out the whole place of your own home when you travel to where instead of paying for two places, you're actually having your original place pay for your trip that's something I want to kind of go after. And like, also, you know, as, as future hosts, I want to get those digital nomads or the work from home people and help them become digital nomads. Yeah, Cause it's that's... something that we find like so rewarding, you know, is our, in our personal life um, to be able to take a three month trip and drive across Canada, still working the entire time and getting everything done and maintaining that five-star standard, but, you know, stretching out time with our little guy and making new experiences and, you know, just like live in life as well. That's so. what it's all about, isn't it? Being able to tie everything in together. And, you know, especially now the technologies there, like you say, 3D tours, you can, you can be there without being there. You can manage everything off your phone or off a laptop, uh, you know, on the go. Right. And still there's so many people who aren't doing this, that, that aren't traveling, you know, they, they, they still, oh, I've got to be at home or I've got to be where I know the place of work. As time goes on, like you say, because of COVID, there's going to be less people in the offices, more people working from home. Companies are going to realize it's cheaper not to have, you know, sort of the offices and that. Bunch when, of office space. Yeah. And they can have happier people and happier people are more productive people. So that's really awesome. So take me through the name. I, I think that's awesome. And I can see the branding in the background, uh, you know, stay, work mm -hmm. and play and swap. I mean, that is awesome because you get the connotation of, of you know, you're swapping your house for another house and stay work and play stands, you know, stands for that. Talk us through how that came around. Uh, actually, Lindsay's sister gets credit for that actual name, but you know, we kind of had that, like, you know, when we were kind of spitballing the idea, it was just like, you know, it's somewhere where they can stay, but it's also a co-working place, but we also want them to have fun outside. And yeah, I just eventually swap kind of like close to like SWAT, just like that quick one syllable thing. And yeah, like it, as soon as we kind of like threw that out, it was like, oh my God, all right, that's the one. Stay, work and play. It speaks to the digital nomads. It speaks yeah. to kind of our avatar of like who we want to serve. And then, yeah, again, like we have some other ideas along that brand where it's just like an exchange of value or an exchange of, um, you know, like we've talked about like making it to where our different guests would sign up to like teach one thing to the rest of the group at some point, like whenever we do get back to that model as well, where they're swapping like their talent, sharing it, and then other people are sharing their talent and just, you know, just make it a more fun, open, um, rewarding experience for everybody. It definitely, so. definitely shows. And like you say, that appeals to that digital nomad, the stay, work and play. I mean, you could be a family going away. You've got to do some some work for a few hours, but then as soon as you're done, you know, you, you get the family together and go and go and experience that part of the world, uh, wherever the, the property is. And you mentioned you've got 18 exactly. properties. Uh, are they local or, or where does the, where are they location wise? Uh, there's only three of them that are within 50 miles. Wow. The rest are all over. And again, it is all just because during COVID and like, actually this is in the chapter but it's um written on top of my keyboard right now is maintain location independence uh, nice. and so because i want to be able to travel with my family mm -hmm. i want to also be able to like i said before solve problems without physically being there yeah and you mentioned all the technology there is now like if a guest has a question about a certain thing 
they can tell me or they can FaceTime me and I can just be there in the room with them at that point, even if I'm in Canada or Croatia or whatever, as long as I'm accessible and I'm there as soon as they, you know, me or one of my teammates is there as soon as they have that question, they're going to feel well taken care of. And it's actually more efficient than if someone was driving 40 miles to go, you know, handle a small problem. And what that does also is every one of the owners I've worked with has purchased a home in a different market since we've been working together because they know they can take me and, you know, my skill set and software to that future market, even if, you know, whereas in most situations you are kind of landlocked or like you're limited to a certain geographic area. Um, the way I'm trying to run things is where, you know, take me with you. If you love vacationing in North Carolina, um, in the, in the mountains, then if you want to have a place there, I can manage that for you. Yeah, if you want to place in Florida, I can manage that for you. you want, you know, a lake in Texas, I can do that for you. So yeah, it's been a fun ride. And because we have traveled quite a bit, um, even if I've never been to these places, I know how to research like a traveler and to quickly find, you know, oh, these are the restaurants I would go to. These are the, the, the fun things that look like are in the area. I'll scout some of the different Airbnb listings, see what are mentioned in those over and over again. And then I'll just have a general recommendation list at the beginning. And then I'll also follow up with guests like, hey, is there anything you did that was especially amazing you'd want to share with future guests? And just as it kind of, you know, as you get that trial and error, you build a better and better and tighter list that everyone's happy with. Definitely. That, that, that bit you've just mentioned about your existing guests are your best researchers, because like you say, you, you've traveled to 35 countries, you know how to research, you, you're doing the same as, as what they would probably do, but you're getting that information ready for them. But then after they've stayed, because they've been to the area, they might have, oh, I love this cafe or I love this bar. And you've then got that to add to your recommendation. So it becomes self perpetuating, doesn't it? So that is an awesome, uh, awesome little tip. And, uh, you know, even just following up with guests after their stay, so many people just, you know, wait for the review. They're not actually asking those questions of where would you recommend just so we know, you know, how was your stay, that sort of thing. And really just getting all that information because all that information is what you can tweak for the next guest who comes to stay to make their in experience even better. So uh, yeah, that's, that's really amazing. And to have the mantra of, you know, work independently for, from any location is, is just absolutely amazing. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of people listening to this going, well, you know, I want to do the same. How do you uh, add more, uh, more hosts or more co-hosting and that side of things? Is there, is there a certain method that you look to gain more, more hosts or is it just word of mouth? Uh, so far it's been mainly word of mouth. Um, I really haven't, you know, because I'm like, my whole thing is before I open up the fire hydrant, I want to make sure I can actually, you know, absorb and handle any requests that come in. So for the last several, I mean, really since I've been doing this business and going through legends X was a big part of it, just getting that the system down and the systems mentality of like, how can someone else do this as well as I can? How can I make it so simple for them? Or how can I automate it to where they can do it just as well as I can? Um, and so I've really been just building that right now and getting word of mouth from my current owners and a few um, like Facebook leads and things like that. But I haven't really promoted what I do yet, even to friends and family or like previous business lists or anything that I've had. Um, I'm getting ready to do that. I think the hospital host book that we're putting out is gonna be a good launch point for all that. Um, and it's been a good, like, you know, kick in the butt to get me ready to do that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I feel like I do have the systems down now. I feel like I have simplified things enough to where if I get 25 people that reach out next month, I'd be able to mainly handle it and get it all set up. And then once they're in our system, it'll run my clockwork. Do you know that I, I love that as well, because that brings us on to, you know, the hospitable host book and, you know, the, the projects we're involved in. And seeing you know seeing your business uh before like legends x and that side of things a lot of people would be listening to this going oh you're only now scaling up but actually a lot of people would be going oh my god 18 properties is is amazing you know like this so uh yeah i can't wait to see the future and 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 see you know it's going to be a big thing so it's going to be amazing but yeah let's talk a little bit about hospitable hosts so for anybody listening who isn't aware, uh, Sean and myself, people like Julie George from Australia, Mark Simpson, of course, uh, from, from this podcast, from Boostly Podcast, uh, we're all involved in a book project together. And there's the idea of uh, Jody Sterling, 
she's come up with the concept that we'll get 40 hosts from all over the globe you know obviously uh sean who's based in texas uh, people based in canada we've got people in europe the uk australia japan and all of these awesome people have written their chapter in this book and the different stories from hosting to teaching um just all stories from across uh, the hospitality communities and we're involved in this together and so this book what got you involved in that sean what made you say you know what i'm gonna go for that that's a great idea man i mean i was like when i first heard of the idea i was very intrigued and then i kind of like oh, i'm gonna check that out later and i kind of forgot about it but then i saw you were involved i saw mark was involved i saw you know dr rachel was involved um you know sergio like all these amazing people that i look up to that i respect that i've learned from before and i'm like man i don't want to be left behind like i want to be associated with these you know incredible hosts we have a weird story to tell maybe we can inspire people that it is possible to remotely co-host um and yeah i mean i just thought it was an amazing project and like yeah as the amazing people started getting together i'm like wow if i can be a part of this group and like learn from this group and you know just build a even bigger community with this group like it's just going to be a rocket ship for everybody so I, I was so excited to you know have the opportunity like funny story whenever i did like reach out jody was like "Ooh, okay you can do it but it has to be done by march 31st and it was like march 29th or something like that yeah, so i had like, is on two, i'd like Oh man, I had like two 5 a.m. mornings, like, like I mean, like through the night until 5 a.m. because we have our little, I got a four and a half year old, so I'd like, you know, get in when I could to write everything and focus. Um, but I'm I'm glad that there was that time pressure because I'm a bit of a procrastinator in a lot of situations, so I like that pressure against my back to where I like, okay, it has to be done. I got to get it done. Um, and yeah, I love the process. I've never you know, obviously been an author or written a chapter in a book or anything. So it was a fun experience. Again, I loved just kind of envisioning the person that might read the book and just sharing, you know, our story, but then how it can be relevant for them, how the tips and tricks that I've developed can be relevant and helpful to them. And yeah, man, I cannot wait to read the other 39 or whatever chapters, like absolutely you know, a lot of amazing people. Like I can't wait. Like just the little snippets that we've seen on like social media from everyone. I'm like, damn, that looks pretty cool. Like yours where like the food didn't taste right in your mouth and you knew something had to change. Like, you know, can't wait, that's, man. That's exactly it. The I I think the first 40 copies are going to be sold to each of us who are reading each other's stories. Do you know what I mean? Like it's it's gonna be incredible. Sure. And that the the want to be part of it you know, there's a certain amount of fear of, of missing out on that amazing project, because this is the first time when, uh, you know, when this is going to be released. And I can see there's going to be many more of, of, of this sort of thing. And like you say, the people reading it, they're going to get tips from it. They're going to get, uh, you know, funny experiences. I know uh, Mark's story is about saving someone's life. So there's there's all sorts of stuff right. in there. And even just speaking to you, you know, on, the, on this podcast, this I'm excited to read how you're managing to travel with a family you know and and you know you gave us a little preview of what your chapter's about there so that is going to be absolutely amazing and one of the things obviously we're involved in the hospitable host facebook group where we get given the tasks to do and, and having that pressure like you say is a good thing one of the things which having that pressure does is it kicks your butt to make sure you're going to put something out there and i don't know about you but i felt i got mine 80 percent right and then I put it out there and actually that was good because you're forced to just get it out there. You get the editors come back with stuff, don't you? So it's really good. One of the other things I saw in there was your, um, uh, you know, why, what is a hospitable host in general? And I completely resonated with, with why or what is a hospitable host? So just cover that for us if you can, what, what is a hospitable host in, in your, in your words? Yeah, man. I mean, for me, again, it's it's all about like taking very seriously the responsibility to show whoever books your home an incredible experience and like make sure that their entire group has a great time in, in whatever home and on top of that outside in, in that city or that town through your recommendations, because it might be their only trip of the entire year, might be the only time with their, their family the entire year. And, you know, it's it's something where 
you got to get that right, man. Cause like they've spent a lot of money. They're getting together with family. You want to make sure they're focusing on creating incredible experiences and not worrying about, you know, a toilet not working or something like that. But if something like that does happen, then you jump in, you take care of it and make it feel right. And then get them back on track to create those memories. That's exactly so, what, I mean, to what, me, that's what a hospitable host does, isn't it? It's just making sure that experience for them is, is absolutely on point and knowing, like you say, that might be their only stay that year. So, you know, just, just making sure they're all looked after and not every host out there looks at guests like guests coming away for for experiences sometimes people are guilty of looking at guests like numbers and income and that side of things and that's completely right. they're the ones who won't necessarily last or to to get the best reviews and that sort of thing this entire hosting process of, of being a host is about delivering on the experience and making sure that those people's experiences I, I picture them like the heroes of of the story. They're, they've they've booked that holiday for their family. They want they've got in mind that feeling of what they want from that holiday, and it's our job as the guides to to make that possible. So they're not worrying about like you say broken toilets and stuff. So um, yeah, I'm really really excited about that. So exactly, and that, that's why that's why I chose that like five star guarantee is kind of my main metric because as long as the guest is having a good time then the, the listing is going to have great reviews. Then the prices will go up. Then the owner will be happy. And if you just have that, like it's got to be a five star. And if you do hear about something that's messed up or broken, you got to make sure that that only affects that one group. They're still taken care of. And then it's, you know, back to perfect for the next group. And you know, it doesn't mean that like everything's always perfect. If, even if you get a five star review, but it just means that you, you know, you care, you show that you care, you, you know, you take action to help them out. And then again, like you get their vacation back on track where they're having fun. 100%, 100%. And what would you say then to somebody who's listening to this and thinking, you know, I'm, I'm looking to get started as a host, what tips would you have? And what advice would you say to somebody who comes to you and say, look, Sean, I'm, I'm thinking about being a host. What is your, your golden nugget of, of advice? Um, my main thing, is make things convenient for the guests, for the owners, for the cleaners. Like maybe if you're just starting out hosting, you might be doing your own cleaning to begin. But for the actual guests, think about what it's like to arrive in a strange place for the first time and how can you make that an easy process? So for me, I always have photos of the front door that I share with them. If there's any tricky parking or anything like that, there's an aerial map circling where they park, you know, the less you can make it text and the more you can make it pictures to where it's a convenient, easy, seamless check-in with a door, you know, a, a keypad with their last four of their cell phone or whatever it is, you know, it, every time you travel, it's like, it's a long day. You might have a long car trip or you might have a train ride or you might have a flight and there's chaos along the way. And you're going to be like that salvation from that chaos is the easy check-in process. They're in that fresh home. You know, they're relaxing, the vacation has begun. And then, oh, what are we going to order for pizza? Or what are we going to get for dinner tonight? Oh, look, here's a great recommendation right here. And then they enjoy that meal and then it's off and running. That's so nice. for me, uh, I just like view things from a guest perspective and like just pretend you're trying to show your best friend an amazing time in your city or your town or whatever else. And yeah, you can start small with a side bedroom or a friend's house or whatever, but yeah, just try to care about your guests, make it convenient for them, and then show them a fun experience. Do you know, that is an awesome, awesome way to sort of draw it to, to a close on there with, you know, treat them like your best friend and you can't go wrong. You know, like, like you say, just when somebody checks into a new place, you don't know the, the area, you might be worried about ordering from the worst pizza shop. Do you know what I mean? So just having those recommendations mm -hmm. is so important. And like you say, I, I hadn't thought of it like that. Like most people, when they are traveling, it is, especially with family. I mean, I've got a five-year-old, so similar to yourself, yeah. you know, yeah. traveling isn't, isn't fun all the time with, you know, the journey part of exactly. it. Getting there is fun and relaxing. So uh, yeah, I like that. And the visual side of things is probably reduces the amount of calls as well you get. So um, compared to text, oh, nobody sure. reads. That's it. So Awesome. So what I'd like exactly. to do now. And 
real quick, that, that's that's a definite tip. Like if you do get questions about a certain thing multiple times, like start building that into your check-in message or make a photo of it. So you can answer that question before it's ever asked. Yeah, 100%, 100%. So what I like to do towards the end is to just ask some fun questions. So these can be short, they can be long, as long as you like on there. Um, but yeah, so you mentioned you've traveled to 35 countries. Where's still on the list? Where's next? Where is the place you'd love to go to and you haven't been yet? Uh, so Japan would probably be really high up on the list. We were actually like Lindsay's a gymnastics nerd and she loves it. So we were planning on going for the 2020 Olympics. Oh, nice. It was going to be our big trip for the summer. Um, and then obviously COVID wrecked that all. But mm -hmm. my old, like one of my older brothers was actually born in Japan because my dad was you know, in the military and they lived all over Europe. And that's, I was born in Germany when I was two and then we moved to the States. Okay. So I like was born with Wonderlust because like my older brothers would always be talking about, oh, when we were in Italy and when we were in Germany and oh, in Japan. And so I was like, I got left out on all that. So, yeah. you know, I was always like, oh man, I can't wait to get over there and do something and see new things and be way out of my comfort zone. And it's you know, in the learn, blood you know, to travel. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I love it. And then like to find someone that also had that itch and had already done it, I thought it was so cool. And then, yeah, we, we whenever we had our, our little guy, um, you know, we had family and friends like, well, I know you guys love traveling, but there go your travel days. And we just took that as, you know, like kind of a dare, like, all right, we'll watch this. And then we go <laughs> off for three months in Scandinavia and Eastern Europe. And yeah, I, we love it because, you know, you see those pictures or like you think back on that trip and instead of like, oh, it, it's such a blur and it all happened so fast. You're like, oh my God, like remember that week and we ate that and we did this. And like, you have so many more distinct memories while you're traveling because you are in an uncomfortable, unique kind of different situation that like, yeah, you remember so much more and you're more in the moment and present. And yeah, so we love traveling. Japan is definitely a place that, has been built up to me and like i know it's gonna be amazing tracy one of the authors of the book i was gonna know, say you need to speak to tracy her. yeah but yeah that's definitely on the list at some point amazing amazing do you know you've inspired me there because you're absolutely right that the memories that you take you know you, you you take more pictures when you're traveling so you've got more memories right. to, to spark that memory of what you're doing whereas when you're at home for long periods of time especially during the lockdowns and stuff like that it kind of blurred into one big block didn't it you know the entire thing exactly 100%. exactly so, uh what is your favorite food traveling to all these different places top meal or top food uh man i love it i love all sorts of food um one thing that I miss every time we leave Austin is breakfast tacos. And breakfast that's something you really can't find anywhere. And, but like breakfast tacos are an essential thing. Like anytime we come back to Austin, we go to Torchy's tacos and that's our first meal every single time. But whenever we're traveling, um, you know, kind of my go-to man is like any sort of rice bowl with like some, you know, gravy or juices on top of it. Like just kind of the comfort food style, like, I absolutely love that. And I'm definitely an adventurous eater where, you know, I'll try kind of the weird off the wall stuff. Yeah. Like the local food. The local... Yeah, exactly. Like I, I'm like, all right, you know, I might pay for this tomorrow, but I'm going to, I'm going to give it a shot and say, I've tried it. So, uh, if you, yeah, if just... you go to Japan, there's going to be a lot of that. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure I'll, I'm sure I'll walk back on that. Uh, if I go to Japan, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely, yeah. I cannot wait to just see those like, you know, the food markets and the, uh, like just the street food. I love street food, like food truck, that type stuff. Yeah. Cause I mean, you can get incredible food and we're very laid back people. So we don't need the big atmosphere. Like we just want great food where the locals eat and like the food is incredible. And yeah. It's so. often the best places, isn't it? On these, uh, so yeah. Norwich, if you're ever in the UK, Sean, come to Norwich. It's got the biggest yeah. open ear permanent market in europe so it's got uh so there's loads oh, of yeah. street stalls and honestly that's the best place people go where's the best place to eat i go to the market go and get go and get stuff off the market these are these are awesome stalls every food you could want is is all there so 100 percent. and i've never heard of breakfast tacos so i've written that down on my list i'm gonna find somewhere which will I'll do some breakfast tacos yeah. next time I'm in the us so um absolutely man so who would be your top celebrity to meet Um, so 
can go a lot of ways with this. Like Tim Ferriss would be cool to meet. Yeah. He actually lives in Austin somewhere. That'd be awesome. Um, a random person I'd love to meet that isn't necessarily a celebrity is there's a, we- a website called Wait But Why. Mm-hmm. And it's just this guy that writes all these like funny, like very deep and insightful, like essentially comics um, with like crew drawings and swear words and all that stuff. But it's all like really high level, incredible stuff. He did a full like four part thing on Elon Musk where Elon Musk like, you know, was interviewed by him. But I got Tim Urban, like I would love to just talk just because some of his articles have like definitely shaped the way I think. I'm going to write that down. Tim Urban, did you say? Yep. Yep. So wait, but why? Um, The first one I would start with is called Taming the Mammoth. And it's about how like the, the general overview of it is you know, our, bio, like our brain essentially is wired for 50,000 BC. And he, he, mm. he talks about how like we have a mammoth, like a dumb extinct, you know, a stupid mammoth in our brain that makes us want to feel part of the group, part of the tribe, not take risks. We want to fit in because in 50,000 BC, if you didn't fit into the group, you're off by oh, yourself yeah. and you're not going to make You'd it. have been killed off. <laughs> exactly. But you know, now we're in a totally different world. We still have that part of our brain that's like, ooh, don't try that risky thing. Ooh, don't do that. Oh, don't, you know, you know, your mom would want you to do this. But like, you have the, also the authentic voice in your head. It's like, well, this is what I really want to do or this is what I want to try. And like, just that like 15 minute article, definitely if you can keep it in the front of your mind, like we'll definitely, you know, have you taking more challenges, have you like realizing when you're doing something because it's the social norm versus like something you actually want to try to do. So definitely, definitely. There's, um, the mammoth. Check it out. I'll check that out. That's uh, you've reminded me of some of the philosophies and, and some of the books that, uh, you know, they do talk about we're an outdated model, you know, like, so, so a book by Rob Moore talks about, you know, we, we are an outdated model uh, effectively, you know, technology is moving much quicker than, than our internal side of things can, can cope with. So yeah, and like you say, the reason we perceive danger is because if we'd have gone out in the middle of, say, the woods or a different part of the world, you could have been killed, you know, in the in the in the in the sort of caveman times and that. Whereas now, the worst you could get is is lost, and then you've got your mobile phone, you know. But we still have that fear, don't we? So it's uh, it's an interesting one. And exactly. Lastly, then, so and I think I know what you're going to say to this, but a, a quote or a philosophy that you live by. I know you mentioned one above the screen. Yeah, I mean, maintain location independence is definitely like when whenever we were in Legends X, we had to do like our core values, but then also our North Star goal. Yeah. And for me, that was the most important thing. Just like I won't take a property if I have to physically be there to manage it. Because mm-hmm. like our whole vision as a family is we're gonna work our butts off wherever we're at, but we love to be in new places, get out of our comfort zone, see new things. Um, so you know, at the expense of even you know, profitable money-making things like having that as a kind of a core value of like, no, we got to make sure that if we want to pick up and go and go see that event or be at that thing or visit that family member, we can pick up and do it and, you know, make that happen. And like I said, we're able to rent our place out while we leave to help pay for that trip. Amazing. So we don't have that anchor back home that's, you know, keeping us from like, oh, we can't only go for three days. You know what I mean? So that, that's, again, a big life hack um, that's kind of enabled us to do all this. You know, that is a great pillar for anybody listening. Again, just to just to have your set values over what you want and what you don't want and just stick by that, because ultimately we don't we don't live to work, you know, or we, we work to live at the end of the day. So by you setting those parameters, like you say, it doesn't matter what the profit is of, of those units. It's a case of it's got to fit in with that North Star and that's a great way to uh, to end on. So, Sean, this has been absolutely terrific. And uh, yeah, I've really, I feel like I really know your business and I'm excited to see the future. I, I can see it's gonna go big with, uh, you know, stay, work and play. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you, uh, you know, sort of more on on some of the, lives and stuff like that before the book launch so the book's being launched in may and uh, you're going to see a lot more from from sean and myself and obviously julie george and mark and all the awesome hosts uh in there so thanks again sean and uh, yeah we'll speak again all right thanks so much liam great talking to you and yeah can't wait to read your chapter
just before you go, if those listeners want to get in touch with you, how is best to do? So if somebody, uh, you know, they want to find out more about Swap or they, uh, you know, have been inspired of, of your story about how you travel and want to find out how they can do that too, what's the best way to get in touch with you? If you go to stayworkandplay.com, that'll have all the links you need. Um, yeah, just go there, shoot me a contact message. I'm happy to help with any hosting advice or just life advice or just chatting. Like I love talking to people, helping them out when I can, pointing them in the right direction, um, and then also learning from them. So yeah, reach out, um, stayworkandplay.com. You're going to get inundated, I'm sure, especially after this book launch. So <laughs> thanks again, Sean. Yeah. Having a blast, gonna get it on the Boostly podcast. Boostly like Bruce Lee, cause it's so hard and the tea is loose leaf. Making up those rhymes, don't write it, just do it loosely.